headline stories uh, today, but uh, we do have other stories at this time, and Palisa is one of them. Yes, I do, Peter. Very inspirational indeed. Uh, 15 international rising talents who are promising young women scientists from across the world were recognized at the L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science International Awards in Paris and France. Dr. Priscilla Manti of the Department of Pharmacology at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Ghana won the L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science International Rising Talent Award. Dr. Manti, who is the only African among 15 recipients of the award in 2018, received one of the two L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science Sub-Saharan Africa post-doctoral fellowships. She now joins us in studio to tell us more about hair research good afternoon to you thank you so much for coming through thank you yeah now talk to us about this award firstly just make us understand okay so um l'oreal foundation has this partnership with unesco where they try to find the most promising um, women scientists around the world mm -hmm. and more or less sort of supports their research through endowments and then some leadership training. So um, the awards are divided into um, regions. So we have, for instance, um, before in 2018 when I won it, we had the Sub-Saharan region. Mm -hmm. Then for instance, we have for the um, Arab states and then the like. So they recognize some women from these regions. And then the winners from these regions are put together and then the most Promising 15 are recognized at an international awards um, the subsequent year. Yeah. So that's the International Rising Talent Award. Awards, yes. yeah. So let's just talk about the challenges that women face more so in science. And um, so as a woman, generally we tend to face a lot of problems. Yeah, in the the stereotypes. Yes. Eh? We have to deal with the stereotypes of what the role of a woman is in society. And it is not any difference when you're a woman in science. Mm -hmm. Because um, if, for instance, you want to pursue a PhD, then the questions begin. You, people expect you to be able to explain how you're going to balance your traditional role as a woman. As a woman. Yes, mm -hmm. one, getting married, having children, yes. and also staying in the lab. So those are some of the things you would have to deal with. and because you are, you are, your place is not traditionally supposed to be in the lab, you'd have to more or less wrestle with the men to be able to establish yourself. And the reality is it science. is very difficult to do, you know, to be able to balance both. Isn't yes, it? it's, it's yeah. not easy. Yes, mm. it's not easy to be able to balance both because um, whether or not you like it, if you have children, you, at the end of the day, you have to go back home. You have to go and back home. take care yeah. of your children. I take think care of my colleague husband. Peter and I were having that conversation earlier on that, you know, you can work as much as you, you do at work, but when you go back home, you are still you're a, a mother, yes. you're a wife, you're expected to do some calls. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that, that's mm. true. Yeah. So it's for a woman in science, it's very, very important to have a husband that supports your efforts because... Mm. If you do not have a man who is understanding of what you want to achieve in life, then it's, it's more or less impossible. No, yes. certainly. Now, tell us more about your research, uh, Riel. I'm not going to get into the <laughs> terminologies that I see here, but yes. simplify it for us and make us understand as just ordinary people on the ground. Okay, so I am what we call a neuropharmacologist. So what that simply means is that I deal with how drugs act, and especially how they affect the brain and the spinal cord in order to give you certain effects. So my research is mon uh, mostly um, targeted towards um, discovering or producing brand new drugs for the condition epilepsy, which I'm sure you have yes, heard, yes, yes. which is characterized by seizures. Mm. And I try to discover um, new drugs for epilepsy by looking at traditional medicine which is used in Ghana. So we have a lot of traditional medical practice practitioners who always make these claims that they have this magical molecule sure. yes, yes, for yeah. everything. So I try to look at what they do and then apply my science. So if they make claims that oh they have this 
um, plant. this plant that can um, cure epilepsy. I take it into the lab and then use my science to try and find out whether it is but true. But what have you found so far? So because older people believe in your traditional cures and traditional medicine. Isn't yes. it really working? Yes. Um, I have um, tested quite a number of plants. Some work, some do not. That's the truth. Some work, some do not. And some are so um, effective that they sometimes are better than the um, drugs that we have on the market. Mm -hmm. So there is some truth to traditional medicine. It's not all a lie, yes. But um, the problem with traditional medicine is it's coming from a plant and anybody at all can make it. So sometimes it's hard to actually measure. So how much of it am I supposed to take to in to give in the yeah. effect? And if I, if I get the same plant from somebody else, how much of it am I supposed to take? Mm -hmm. Is it the same amount? Yes. So that's where the science comes in. So we try to more or less standardize it so that you know that no matter where you get it from, the effects you should expect will be the same. Yeah. Now, here I am listening to you and uh, thinking that, you know, there are many young women who would want to do what you do. And the reality on the African continent is we lack mentors. Yes. And I know you one of the champions of uh, mentorship. Talk yes. to us about your role in that regard. So, um, growing up as a, as a woman in science, I started to think of the things that I would have wished were done for me. Mm -hmm. It would have made my journey easier. So what I do is I try to identify young people who are showing some interest in science and then try to provide for them those opportunities that I did not have the benefit of. So I have this um, little mentoring program which I started where I try to pair them up with mentors in some um, educational institutions so in some universities, m mainly outside the continent. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and the reason why I do that is I want to place my mentees in an environment where there's diversity in terms of the people they are working with and um, the things that Being they are learning. Being exposed yeah, to the so world they are, in general. Yeah, exposed yes. to the world. Yeah. They learn new cultures. And you know that when you are exposed, your thinking becomes very different. It does. Yes. Yeah. So that's one of the things I try to do. So they go through these, this program, and then after the program, come back, and then we have a conversation. And then after that, we know whether science is really what you want to, want to do, or you just enjoy the experience of um, experiencing a what different culture. What is more important? Yes. Is it more important to enjoy it, or is it important that it's something that you really want to do because I believe when you do something along the way it becomes sort of a passion. I, I think the experience is, is best you enjoy it. Mm. Yes, because through that experience you probably will find out that science is not what you want to do. And maybe through that experience we will discover what your passion is. So for me it's always very important that they enjoy the experience, yes. Because sometimes you might meet somebody through that interaction mm. who would help guide you. Yeah. Yes, better it than even I could. It makes it easier when you enjoy it. So where to from here? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a very big question. Mm -hmm. So my ultimate goal, research goal, is to find a cure for epilepsy. As you know, currently there's no drug that can cure epilepsy. So that's what mm -hmm. I'm working towards. Okay. And I am gradually setting up my own research lab where I can bring in a lot more women into the neuroscience field because yeah. there are not too many women in there. So currently that's, that's the goal that yeah. I have set my eyes on. Yeah. So how close do you think we are from finding the cure? Almost there. Almost it's just there. a matter of more research yes, and research and research. But we will get there. Yeah. Yes. All right. No, um, thank you so much for coming through a very inspirational story that you've just told us here on the SABC News. We appreciate it. And um, all the best going forward. Hopefully, the next time we have you in studio, we'll be talking about a cure for epilepsy. Definitely. Definitely. It's been nice being here. Thank, thank you, you so much. Well, there you have it. Dr. Priscilla Monti uh, from the Department of Pharmacology at uh, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Gano, of course, uh, talking to us about heroic uh, research, really, and uh, the award from uh, the L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science International Rising Talent Award. We'll take a quick ad break here on SA Today. Your sports news is up next.